नमस्ते एंड वेलकम एवरीवन मनीषा जी वी विल स्टार्ट यस यस वी कैन स्टार्ट मैम यस मनीषा जी ओके नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम ऑल टू द ग्लोबल योगा फेस्टिवल an initiative taken by dr vikas chote sir and shwetambari ma'am at swasti yoga center let me introduce to myself first i am manisha gar associated with swasti yoga center past 3 years i am a level 1 certified certified yoga teacher under ministry of ayush i am a level 1 i have also completed my kids yoga training course and also yoga therapy course with swasti yoga center as you all know swasti yoga center is celebrating 75 years of india's independence this is a platform where swasti yoga center is trying to spread the knowledge of yoga through various programs workshops yoga and wellness discussions workshops live guidance by prominent speakers panel discussions quiz and essay competitions question answer sessions bhajan kirtan and much more so let's start with our today's session our today's speaker is mr rahul singh a yoga teacher and founder of soham yoga dhan his qualifications are he has completed pg diploma in yoga rvt 500 hours certifi- certified from international yoga alliance he has also completed his level 2 certified from india yoga mysore several maisu yoga styles under bharat shetty the founder of india yoga he is also pursuing ycb level 3 from swasti yoga center our today subject is free of yoga so i i would request to all our attendees to take maximum benefit from our today's session i request mr rahul singh to take over the session and start with a prayer yes mr rahul singh please start thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction manisha ji and you, uh, hello and namaste to everyone to all the great soul here we'll start the session but first we'll do the prayer the patanjali prayer yes so sir. comfortably keep your eyes closed mouth closed focus remains on the tip of your nose and keep observing the natural flow of your breath effortless breathing then slowly join your hands in atmanjali mudra we'll begin the session with the prayer repeat with me yoge na chit मल शरीर वैद्यकोपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिराणतौष्मी स्लोली रव्य पा कप्यूराइज with few gentle blinks open your eyes namaste and uh, welcome to the uh, session today and uh, it's uh, it's an honor and privilege to for me to you know to get this opportunity to speak on this subject tree of yoga so first of all i, I would like to thank my teacher uh, vikas sir to for giving me such an wonderful opportunity and the whole swasti yoga team who helped in making this uh, for me uh, they helped in making this like real and uh, i'm able to present it here so i'd like to thank everyone and i would also like to thank everyone who joined the session so i would like to thank them also so we'll talk on a subject on our topic today is tree of yoga so how you can you know take the seed of yoga and you can grow it like a tree just like a tree grows so this is the sub, uh, this is the topic we'll be uh, talking on uh, that so you know first if you want to plant uh, some tree or if you want to uh, grow some seed you do you do first some necessary preparations 
you find a you know, suitable place where you can plant the you can you know uh, plant the seed so you do some necessary groundings some uh, you remove the you you dig the earth then you remove the unwanted stones or whatever the, the unwanted things are there you remove that so this is the exactly you know in if you want to grow the seed of yoga exactly that preparations is called preparation is called you know the sat karma before you uh, start the practice of yoga you first start with the sat karma in a tradition traditional way it's nowhere like you know right now uh, it's unfortunate and at the same time it's whatever it is it is I, uh, then also you know yoga is going to uh, give you the, your, the benefit of this subject that after back pain people are coming in this after some knee pain or because of anxiety depression or maybe other thing they are coming into yoga and then still they are getting uh, the benefit of this uh, wonderful subject but traditionally if you want to be a yoga practitioner if you want to excel or explore in the field of yoga there were you know certain preparations in the sat karma so that so when you plant the seed you know you put some water and uh, whatever it is necessary for some time then you know the seed germinates into sapling and then from the sapling you know the uh, trunk comes and then from the trunk the leaves come leaf comes so there you know when you start your yoga practice once you are prepared with the your preparing your body you are uh, purifying your body with the sat karma and there are various techniques uh, then comes the yama and niyama how strong you are with your yamas and niyamas that is also very important i'd like to share a story here a small story here that is the story is in the upanishads of raikava so raikava was sitting you know uh, under a bullock bullock cart for 24 hours every day he used to sit under a bullock bullock cart unmoving still so you know the king of that place you know he recognized him that he is a great soul he is sitting here unmoving 24 hours he must be a great soul so he went to that uh, he went to rakava the king went to rakava and uh, uh, asked you know why don't you teach me i want to learn from you so then rakava said what will i you know get in return from my knowledge for my knowledge what you are going to give me so the king said half of my king kingdom half of half of my country and rakava laughed and uh, said you you only offer me what is yours what you can what which belongs to you you offer me that then i'll teach you the king didn't able to answer you know this question at the same time he didn't understood also so he went away but then and now he used to come and visit rakava uh, after that and one day he came to uh, rakava and uh, told him you know i give myself to you then rakava said you now you are a you know fit person for a spiritual life so what we can learn from this story is you know rakava did uh, followed the yamas and niyamas there he wanted to excel in the field of yoga so he was very tr- uh, truthful to with that you know the satya and he was also very uh, non violent uh, in this uh, approach he didn't use he was a king but he didn't used his uh, you know tricks and his power to make rakava uh, fall for it he was in the state of satya and himsa he was truthful that he wanted something he has a sankalpa he has a purpose so he was moving it in in in, in this with the yamas and niyama then you know he used to visit then and now rakava so in that period he was doing exactly his swadhyaya he was finding that a- answer from the swadhyaya ki what rakava exactly wants what is the answer of that question that is exactly the uh, swadhyaya and then in the last what he did iswar pranidhanani he surrendered himself to the rakava and then rakava you know decided to teach him or to make him his disciple so with the you know yamas and yamas are the root of a tree that exactly you know the root of the tree exactly uh, makes your how you know how powerful or how big a tree is going to be so that's why you know a yogi who wants to grow the tree of yoga be very uh, uh, particular with the yamas 
and with the niyamas niyamas are the trunk niyamas are like the trunk of a tree you need to be in a certain way if you want to make the tree of yoga grow big you need to be in a certain way and you have to follow the saucha santosha tapashwadhyaya ishwar pranidhanani so you exactly have to follow these rules then only you know in in the beginning when you start the practice of yoga at that time it is very easy that you get distracted a lot of fluctuations come a, a lot of uh, you know ups and down comes when you in the initial time you start practicing yoga there if your groundings are strong if the philosophy your teacher uh, the guidance you are getting from someone that is strong the basics are strong you you exactly know where you want to go what is your destination from where you want to be so then it's easy or it's it's so much like evident that you can grow into the path of yoga so once you are established with the yamas and niyamas then you know the branches of the tree grows in different different shapes some uh, some branches are long some in are in a zigzag shape exactly that is your asana there you know, a lot of there are uh, you see there are in the asana sometimes you have to take your leg behind the head sometimes you have to keep the knees close to the belly sometimes you have to be upside down so these are the you see the tree there are a lot of structure different different structure uh, branch, the branch grow of the tree there is no certain way so that is exactly putting you in different different situation in different different asana tells you how in different different situation of the life you are going to deal with it you know upside down you have to balance so if things in your real life goes upside down you can learn you know how to balance how to be in that situation how that you know uh, in gita krishna says samatvam yoga uchyate so the equanimity of mind is yoga but if you see a common person for him what is equanimity or for a yoga practitioner what is that equanimity what is that samatva exactly if you are pra- practicing the asana asana only your alignment is a technique your alignment is a shortcut to bring the samatva to bring that equanimity you have to be perfectly aligned you exactly have you have to have the idea if you are doing trikonasana only where is your big toe and where is your the big toe of the right feet and where is the big toe of your left leg at the same time you exactly understand if you are stretching the right hand your left hand is exactly getting the stretch at the same time otherwise again there is violence with the body and you know in the yamas and niyamas there is ahimsa so if you force yourself too much in your asana also then somewhere you are not doing the justice with the yamas with the, that is some kind of violence on the uh, system and this subject is so uh, deep and uh, so vast that you know there are people who just took one one part one aspect of uh, this eight limbs if you see bhishma he just took one thing celibacy brahmacharya and he conquered the whole world he is like famous and uh, one of the powerful warrior from the mahabharata if you go you know in these time like mahatma gandhi he just took the satya and ahimsa and he became great so this is the power of this subject you just need to understand the small small just one thing you take one thing if if, if you are a student you just understand what is this swadhyaya and that is going to help you to you know grow in your uh, in your path in whatever field you are uh, uh, trying to excel so if you want to be again and one more thing if you are doing any part you are like if you are on the you know uh, asana part also you need to be very uh, strong and grounded with your yamas and niyamas at that time also so you know the, the all these are connected with each other so the you know the root always remains connected to the fruit till the fruit comes in a tree the whole system works in a one line in a one unit so that is again one very important thing with the asana when people used to you know in, in the practice like if you we are uh, doing take one easy asana one kumbhak asana 
so we are balancing on the arm the most of the weight goes on the arms but exactly you need to understand this while doing kumbhakasana also the weight of the body has to be distributed throughout the body because no matter what asana or what uh, what asana you are doing the whole body has to react uh, has to work as a single unit then the samatva and the the perfect then the the perfect uh, then the asana will become perfect you uh, and after the asana after the branches when the branches grows then you know leaves start coming from the branches that leaf exactly tells you about the pranayama that swasa prashwasha gati vichheda that exactly tree in the, the leaf of the tree is a perfect example of pranayama you know the inhalation and exhalation part the leaf leaves are doing that so once you and see after the branches and that's why this is very important you know earlier uh, right now people start directly from the meditation also and it's not uh, like you one can can't start from there but earlier in like old olden days uh, it was always you know you used to do any uh, japa or uh, you used to do any yagna there was always asana pranayama and then dhyana was uh, there so everyone uh, every people has to make sure that you know they are practicing some asanas because that prepares you for the practice of the pranayama that's why the sutra is like that only patanjali speaks about that tashmin chati once you mastered the asana and this mastery doesn't mean that you can take your leg behind the head or you can do all the uh, difficult poses it just mean that when you are sitting you can sit for 30 30 minutes or 15 minutes 20 minutes with the back, with the with your back straight without rolling your shoulders chest out chin belly and the pelvic remains in the same line so it just if someone is saying the mastery of the asana is just that when you are sitting you are not hurting your knees you are not hurting your back but right now when you are lying down you are hurting your back when you are standing or you know climbing you are hurting your knee so that mastery on the physical body comes with the practice of the asana and again if you practice the asana with understanding the depth of the asana then it connects you with other limbs of the yoga pratyahara you know uh, you pra- you practice kurmasana kurmasana is a perfect example of pratyahara if you do kurmasana with that uh, with that philosophical knowledge ki what kurmasana actually means so that that explain the pratyahara there so this is one more uh, beautiful thing about this subject ki you take any part of it it can connects you with all the eight limbs with all the other eight limbs so this is the beautiful this is the beauty of this subject ki nothing can be left out everything is interconnected with each other so you know whatever is happening in right now in our life also that is happening with a purpose and that is you know connected with each other once you know the leaves comes out then the pranayama happens you are doing the asana you are doing the pranayama now what you need you need to develop a good control if you want to you know the dharana and dhyana to happen you have to have a good control on your karmendriya and gyanendriya your sense of uh, organ and the sense of action sense of action and the sense of perception so you need to karmendriya and gyanendriya you have to have a good control then only pratyahara can happen you know you are doing uh, your practice some smell comes from somewhere you get distracted you hear some sound you get distracted you st- you you feel some discomfort in the body you start itching so these are the you know small small things you know if if you see if you go in some yoga nidra class or sometimes in a in a long meditation class the teacher used to pass this small small instruction you just observe you stay there observe and do not pay attention to the bodily discomfort you just try to observe there so he just wanted to check there how much control there is on your arms if some bodily discomfort is happening 
how long you can just watch that without responding without reacting to that so the you know if, if you want to see the pratyahara in that tree the bark is the pratyahara it saves the tree from the worms and other things so so that you know the tree don't da get damaged so that bark is that pratyahara that sealed which you know which keeps your the, the practice of your asana pranayama and the yamas and niyamas safe is that pratyahara so pratyahara is a kind of sealed for your body which which saves you from you know the external energy which is going to which may harm you or may distract you from your sankalpa or from your purpose so that exactly is your pratyahara is the our external layer which you see on a uh tree and if you you know if you scratch that you can see exactly you know the green some you know some uh, juice comes out from the tree the stem of the tree or the, from the trunk of the tree if you scratch there you can see that so that is a covering there which which is you know making you making that tree safe keeping that tree safe then comes the dharana part single point concentration single point focus focusing on a single point so you 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 in the tree from the root of the tree to the leaves the energy passes without any you know without any uh, discomfort and in a very uh, channelized way because the purpose is there because the next part is what is the dhyana the flower has to bloom so for for that you know once you are established in the dharana the next part comes is the dhyana only so when you start focusing on that uh, single part because the flower has to bloom so that the energy has to reach to that point so that the flower blooms without any uh, distraction or without any disturbance so meditating on a single point somewhere you and the object absorbs and becomes the the one then there is no difference between you and the object so then the flower blooms and the dhyana happens and once you start you know uh, establishing yourself in uh, dharana dhyana the next part comes is the fruit the fruit comes from the tree that fruit is exactly the samadhi which and you know if you say tree there is again one asana also vrikshasana so this i learned in my level 3 class only from my teacher uh, he asked all the students from the class that what you learn from uh, vrikshasana so we came up with whatever we have uh, uh, like it brings you know stability it brings focus uh, this is good for your legs it brings it also helps in opening the hip and a lot of other other things it makes you uh, it is not very easy to balance it with a lot of thoughts in the mind and other other things so sir so said now you are a level 3 teacher these explanation comes from a level 1 and a level 2 teacher what more you can tell about vrikshasana what more we can learn from this uh, vrikshasana i want to hear that then we came to know when we surrendered now we don't know we have no idea like please enlighten us then we learn you know the vriksh vriksha he said like if i plant a tree today and if you goes there if you go there and uh, you take the fruit from the tree so that tree is not going to tell you that you don't pluck uh, fruit from me or you don't take this fruit because you know this person has planted the tree so he is only getting the uh, the fruit from this tree no you are not allowed so this is the quality of a tree that he is open for everyone whoever comes there the fruit is for uh, that person so you you know you ask yourself in your life how for how many people you are that open like you know we used to stay open with only friends family and then other person but so you figure out for like you are like a tree is there uh, this quality in you if, if you are doing that vrikshasana are you cultivating this thought to being open and uh, uh, for every person every person out there so that is the vrikshasana you need to practice 
so there are other things also uh, then the other things comes from this tree of yoga is what are the you know when you want to grow this tree what are the challenges there uh, you going to face in this uh, uh, phase when, when you want when, when you are working on this seed to become a banyan tree what what are the things you are going to uh, face then there is you know uh, in uh, yoga there are a lot of uh, obstacles then klesas then uh, badak tatvas there are different names and uh, antarayas are there so all this is going to distract you from the goal from where you want to reach from that samadhi state and one more thing it is here when i am saying about you know the dhyana and uh, the samadhi is just about understanding that atman and brahman that understanding of that oneness with the universe it's not like some people also think when you say samadhi or something it's like leaving the body or you are going to die no a lot of people are uh, present right now with us in this world who are established in their dhyana who are established in their samadhi and still doing a lot of things for this uh, for this for the universe they are doing everything it just their concept of doing things is now sarvabhauma is for everyone they are doing now the whatever they are doing now that is for the sangha for a wide crowd that is uh, he is doing whatever work they are doing is for them also and one more thing comes here so there is going to be you know a lot of obstacle and everything so what is going to help you there what are the certain things which is going to help you there to you know keep your tree stable and keep your tree growing is that you keep on doing your work consistently so exactly then comes the satu dirgha kala nairantarya sat kala sevito dridh bhumihi so satu dirgha kala nairantarya you keep doing whatever the obstacle are coming you keep doing your practice there is no whatever the small practice or long hour practice you are doing you stay consistent with that and stay truthful and with you do that with lot of shraddha also that is also required there so you keep on doing your work and then with lot of detachment abhyasa vairagya so you are not you, if you are doing your practice also you are not allowed to you know attach with your are you attached with your brushing teeth uh, every morning you are you attached with that no we have to do that so that's why this is a part of our lifestyle you know it's it's a cleaning part you attached with your uh, shower no these all are the so that's how you have to take your practice also that is like your brushing that is like your uh, showering that is like your cleaning so that place when your practice uh, gets in your life that important when your yoga practice gets in your life then there is nothing which is gonna uh, which is gonna you know uh, distract or which is gonna disturb your uh, development or your uh, progress in you know making your tree strong your making your uh, yoga tree uh, weak so these are the certain principles of keeping in your mind and i think this is it uh, from my side uh, so i think i uh, tried my best so um, is there any questions now <clears throat> um thank you sir thank you so thank much you so much for taking such a beautiful topic for us i was getting very now nervous speaking yeah. <laughs> uh, in front of uh, sir right now <laughs> no it was actually a good topic from us to where a student starts his learning yoga so i, I think it was a good topic thank you <laughs> so if any questions queries or doubts or any feedbacks all attendees are most welcome rahul ji yes pranam pranam i think it's bankim ji bilkul bilkul yeah it's me <laughs> yes sir yes sir first of all yeah congratulations thank you, you so much thank you us. number one i never thought of this analogy or metaphor okay and that is the great way right for anyone to explain you know the entire um, 
you know, the what's it called? Put it that is Ashtanga Yoga, you know, from beginning to the very end in this analogy of tree. So you did wonderful. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Thank you so much. And I will have to go through this again, probably, you know, and I will find some more to grasp. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rahul ji. Yes, yes. A uh, very nice session it was. Don't be confused or don't be uh, judgmental. You have done a great job and we have enjoyed your session. I hope everyone has learned uh, something new from your session. You have given uh, very nice examples and easy examples like tree and Pratyahar. Very good examples are there. And I hope everyone is enjoying it. Um, and thank you so much for this session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, Praja. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rahulji. It was such a wonderful session. Due to some network congestion, I couldn't be able to hear more. But uh, it was a very different approach to look at a tree. And yes, we enjoyed a lot. Thank and you, you have so a tree much. right on your back also. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> my tree. It's my tree. So, you know, while you are talking, of, uh, you were talking about the tree, I was thinking about this only. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, so I think we should give a big round of applause to Rahul, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Lionel, you want to say something? Lionel is also Yes, there. yes. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you, Rahulji. Yes, it, uh, you're your presentation was very clear and very interesting. Thank you. And, if you and if you agree, I would like to use it in my own yoga class. Of course, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great job, great job. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful, definitely. Um, there's nothing like I can add more seeing the smiles of all the participants that speaks for itself. I think there are some things which are better to be uh, kept at the level of energy rather than giving them words. <laughs> so I'm very delighted to see how the tree of Rahul is blooming. It's getting the fruits and uh, we are the ones who are able to taste the sweetness of it. Thank you very much, Rahulji. Thank you, sir. Learning every day, sir. Learning every day. Uh, Thank you, Rahulji. It's a wonderful Thank session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I would um, encourage everyone to unmute themselves and give a big round of applause to Rahul. And uh, this was... Open up appreciation and uh, respect from the whole family of Swasti Yoga. We hope to have many more wonderful presentations and sessions from you. Thank you very much, Rahul, and thank you very much, everyone. Thank Over you to Manisha Ji. Uh, yes, sir. Um, our tomorrow session will be taken by our guest speaker, Sri Devi Prasad Pramanik. Uh, he will be talking about Sri Aurobindo, a yogi's freedom struggle. Uh, he is a founder of Association So Yoga, France, and a, so, a yoga scholar at Oro University. So yeah. I request you all to join tomorrow's session at same time and same platform. Uh, tomorrow's session is also going to be important because uh, tomorrow is uh, the death anniversary of um, Sri Aurobindo. So. Uh, okay. A great legend, and um, we have Devi Prasad Ji, who is a great scholar of integral yoga, has been associated with um, Aurobindo Ashram and University for a long period of time. So it will be great for all of us to enjoy uh, the Satvik Satsanga that we are going to have tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, I request Rahul sir to end the session with a prayer. Uh, 
राहुल सर यस 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 सिट कंफर्टेबली कीप योर आईज क्लोज माउथ क्लोज फोकस रिमेन्स ऑन द टिप ऑफ योर नोज टेक फ्यू लॉन्ग एंड डीप ब्रेथ We'll end the session with the Santi Mantra. Join your hands in the Manjali Mantra. Repeat with me. Om Shahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Saviryam. तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मेषा ओ शाति 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 स्लोली रव्य पा नमस्ते धन्यवाद सेशन थैंक यू सो मच टू एवरी वन थैंक यू थैंक यू सर